Welcome to my TK Special Edition. Today, I'd like to highlight a few of my favorite new features that are now available in the recently launched TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. As you're well aware of, TK9 has been launched and I am really excited about this new plugin for Photoshop. And today, I want to show you just a few of my favorite new features. Now, I won't be using any certain order for these new features. I'm just going to give them to you as they come to me. Now, the first one is, for me, a real time saver. And as you know, if you watch my TK Friday videos, I always like to set myself up for success by making channel masks at the beginning of my edits. And that has gotten a lot easier. And let me show you. I edit a lot of landscape images on this channel on TK Fridays. And I always like to start out by setting myself up for success. And what I mean by that is saving out a sky and a foreground channel. Because I know I'll be using it in the first step of my process for balance and contrast. But I'll also be using it throughout the editing process. And that has gotten a whole lot easier. With TK8, what I used to do, I would click on this button right here to select the sky. Then I'd click this button, type in the channel's name, and go ahead and save it. I'll just click cancel for now, and I will click this button to deselect that. Okay, and we can still do that, but let me show you how things have gotten a lot easier. Now, if you want to select the sky and save it as a channel, on a Mac, hold your command key down. On a PC, hold your control key down. Hold the command or control key down and click this button right here for sky selection. And look, you're going to get a sky channel. Isn't that great? And now hold the same command or control key down and double click sky. And you've got yourself a foreground selection. So that is like super fast. So that's one of my favorite new features right there. That's a real time saver. Another new feature is an improvement to the mass calculator. And then I'm going to jump right into the color grading tool. My opening step of balance and contrast has gotten a lot quicker. For instance, normally what I would do, I would come up to my channels and let's say I want to start out with foreground to do a balance and contrast. So I would click on foreground. Now here is where the change takes place. Now normally I would need a mask calculator. So I'll click on the mask calculator button. And now I need to intersect the foreground with a midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. With TK8, as soon as I click on the X for intersection, I would have to close out of this foreground selection, but check it out, I don't anymore. And this is a time saver, and to me, this is a big improvement. I'll click X for intersect, and now I can go up and just grab my luminosity mask button here, click on it, and choose midtones three, click equal to make that calculation, and then output it to a color grading tool, and then I would start and do my balance and contrast adjustments and color grading. For instance, I could click on the midtones block and maybe Let's darken up the midtones a little bit. I could go to shadows and maybe pull back on the shadows, darken up the shadows. If I needed highlights, I could adjust highlights. But now let me show you some of my favorite new features in the color grading tool. Now, if you recall, TK8 recently had a multi mass beta update, which really fixed the color grading tool because we had an issue with the color grading tool. It wasn't TK8's problem. It was Photoshop's problem. So Tony fixed that. And we saw a foretaste of what the TK9 color grading tool would have been like, but not the full blown version, which we have now. And one of the features was pinpoint accuracy, which you had in TK8. In other words, with the tip of your cursor, wherever you point that to and left click it with your mouse, that's where that circle will drop right there. And then you can color grade. So that's pinpoint accuracy. So that was one thing. Now, the next feature I want to show you was in TK8 Multimass Beta as well. And if you ever want to see a complementary color of a color grade, hold your command or control key down and click right here. And you'll watch. This will go into the complementary color. I'm holding my command key down because I'm on a Mac control and a PC. So you can switch that out to the complementary color and command or control click it again and go back. So that's a good way of seeing how complementary colors are interacting in your color grading. So... Again, that we had that in the TK8 Multimass Beta, but we also have it here in TK9. Now, let me show you another really good new feature with the color grading tool, and that involves saving out color grading presets. 
One great feature for saving out presets would be for black and white images. I did a real quick black and white conversion on this image, and I really like to tone my images, sometimes with like a selenium tone, more of a bluish cast, or a sepia tone, and I like to do it in the mid-tones. But let's say, for instance, I came up with a sepia tone that I really like. So let me click on mid-tones, and let me click right about here. Okay, maybe make it a little stronger and a little more towards red, something like that. Maybe I say I really like that. So I could come up here and say that as a preset by clicking on this button and click the plus and I could call this one, let's call this one BW Sepia and click OK. So now I have that. Now let's X out of there. And now let's say we want to save a selenium tone preset so we could reset this click on mid-tones and find a color grade that really matches the selenium tone. So I'm gonna try like right about here. And that looks pretty good. Now again, you can make it stronger if you come this way or any color you want, but I think that looks pretty good. And now we can save this as a preset so we can come up here again, click on here and click the plus and we'll call this one BW Selenium and we'll click OK. Okay, so now I have a black and white sepia, black and white selenium. So if I want to see what sepia looks like, click on sepia. If I want to see what selenium looks like, click on selenium. And now I'm going to show you a little tip that I picked up from Sean's button by button video, which I highly recommend that you get it. It's really well worth it. Let me X out of here and let me go ahead and reset this. So, okay, so I have a black and white image and I want to try some of my presets for toning. So now all I need to do is click on this button right here. Now, if you click on black and white sepia, you'll see what sepia looks like. If you click on selenium, you'll see what that looks like. But always the last thing you've clicked on, if you click on that same button again, like I just clicked on sepia, then I clicked on selenium. So if I click selenium again, we'll see sepia. Click selenium again, I'll see selenium. So again, every time I click it, it'll go back and forth between the last two I've clicked. Or I could go back and see what the current black and white looks like by clicking this button right here. Okay, now if I click it again, it'll go to selenium, okay? But if I'm on current color grade, which is black and white, and I click on sepia, now when I click on sepia again, it'll go back to black and white. But say I like sepia, and now all we have to do is click the X, and now we have our sepia tone, so that is really cool. But those are my favorite color grading new features right there. I went back to the color image, but also, you can save out color grading presets for color images. For instance, you might have a special sunset color grade that you like to use in a sky, so you could save that out as a preset or something in the foreground. Or you may like to emulate a certain film or a movie and you could save out those as presets. You can even use this new color grading tool to copy color grades from another image. I'll show you that in another TK Friday tutorial. But for now, those are my favorite features in the color grading tool. My next favorite new feature is Blend If. Blend If has come to the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. We have two different ways of doing Blend If. We can do mask generation from Blend If. That's this button here, which I'll show you in a sec. And then we can just apply Blend If to a layer, which makes Blend If very simple and easy to use. The traditional Photoshop way of doing Blend If is coming to a layer and double clicking and opening up Layer Style and then doing Blend If down here, which is not very user friendly or not very intuitive. I'm just going to click Cancel, but it's so much easier to use using the TK9 plugin, and I'll show you how. Let's start with this button right here. So if we click on this button, we're going to open up the Blend If Mask Generation interface. And this will look pretty similar to Luminosity Mask. You have lights 1 through 6, darks 1 through 6, mids 1 through 3. But then it's kind of like a zone mask where you have zones 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For instance, here's zone 1, going to be dark tone, zone 2, zone 3, four and five and you notice these little circles with sliders and these can all be adjusted i'll save that for tk friday videos i don't want this getting too long this is just a special features video but you have all those adjustments let's go back to a lights one and then of course you have all these mask alteration adjustments here like levels curves the black brush the white brush mask the mask and now we have this new fill where we can go ahead and make a selection with say like a lasso tool and fill it in with black or white, which is really nice. So that's a new feature. And then we have this, I'll call this a hamburger menu. When you click it, 
you're going to get a bunch of new tools that we've never had before. And I'll save this for a TK Friday. We have burn, dodge, blur, invert, all these buttons in the special section here. But I'm going to just let you know they're there and they're exciting. But that's another really cool new feature I don't have time for today. But this is Blendif Mask Generation. And once you get your mask that you want, all you have to do is pick an output source. In other words, if you want to put this to a color grading tool, click this button here, just like this. That lights one mask goes to a color grading tool. Let me X out of here and let's come back in here again and I'll show you another feature here. You can make any kind of a blend if mask you want. Let's say we want to target a zone like zone three. So let me click on zone three. There is zone three. Now there's something special we can do with this. If you hold your shift key down and click on say like the curves adjustment, well, I'll put it to a curves adjustment. I'll click this holding the shift key down and you do not see a mask here, but you'll notice the symbol here is showing me I have blend if here. Now, if I double click right here, you can see there's the blend if adjustment, right? So I don't have a mask. I'm going to click cancel here. I don't have a mask, but I'm applying blend if here. It's just as if I had a mask, but now I can go ahead and make some adjustments, say to my midtones like this. And then if I don't want it on a certain area, I could grab, like, say, for instance, on my CX panel, I'll grab, grab this black brush and click on the mask and make the brush larger at 100% opacity. I could just paint that off of the sky just like that. Isn't that cool? So that opens up a whole new bunch of possibilities here. I hope you're thinking, hmm, this is very interesting, Dave. And it truly, truly is. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer for now by clicking the trash can on my combo panel. Another favorite feature is this button right here for edit blend if. If you click on it, you can edit blend if on any layer. It's very intuitive, easy to use. It's got a bunch of really cool buttons on here like target. You can target certain channels, exclude channels. You could eliminate just certain shadow tones, midtones, or highlight tones. You can save out. This is really cool. You can save out presets blend if presets, which would be really good for say, for instance, if you add a vignette to your image, but yet you want to protect the darkest shadows in the vignette. I'll click on this because I made a preset here. I'm not going to apply it, but I made a preset called vignette protect shadows. I'm just going to X out of here. So you can save presets to do the things that you do all the time, but to really save you time. This video got a little bit longer than I thought it would get, but some other favorites are under my actions. We now have new panels one, two, three, and four. And you can utilize these for whatever you want. And you still have the basic My Actions panel. So you actually have five different panels and you can fill those up to your heart's content with all your favorite actions. Well, there it is, everyone. These are just some of my favorite new features in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. There are many, many more, which we'll be exploring in future TK Friday episodes. Hey, let me know in the comments section below what you think of the new TK9 plugin for Photoshop and let me know what your favorite new features are. I'd really like to hear from you. Please let me know. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.